Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Um, before we move on to the next videos, I want to show you how to render the cup we made in case you want to render something for your own portfolio or get practice using Maya's Arnold Renderer. Um, but before we begin, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content. Now let's jump right in. All right, let's render this cup. So here we have our cup. And the first thing we'll need to do is establish some type of composition before we throw in any of those lights, or at least have an idea of it. Um, because what I'm going to do is go with a static shot. And if it was something dynamic, I would um, keep rotating, adjust lights. But because it's something static, I want to establish that first. So first thing we need to do, I'm saying first a lot, Okay, let's give our cup the proper material because we're using the Arnold Renderer. And to do that, you can open up the Hypershade. And we need to give this the AI Standard Surface. So go to the Arnold tab under Shader, choose AI Standard Surface, and I'm going to call this AI Cup. All right, and I'm just going to reduce that for a second. Next, um, I want to have some type of ground plane. Before that, I need to see what I'm planning to render. So I need to just create a camera. So let's do that next. Um, go up to the two panel view, select that one. And here's our side panel. And then go up to the create tab, choose camera, and then camera. And that'll create a new camera. I'm gonna bring back our grid, and then I'm gonna rotate the camera. So I'm holding down J, dragging this, so that it's pointing uh, this way. And then I want to change this perspective to use this camera. So under panels, under what perspective you'd like, choose camera one. And then let's name this camera so it doesn't get too confusing. In the outliner, we'll call camera one um, render cam. Here we go. And then let's just bring this camera back a little bit, pull it up a little bit, and then bring it back a bit more. All right. So now we want to see what this camera is rendering. I'm just closing up that outliner. And to do that, we want to go up to view under camera settings, change it to resolution gate. And it's actually not a bad um, um, frame already for it. Next, I want to give it a bit of an overscan. Go over to view camera settings at the bottom, choose overscan. So select that. And then now we see what gives us a better sense of the frame. And I can see now maybe I even want to bring the camera in just slightly. But first, I want to reduce this um, white on border. So while the camera is selected, go to the Attribute Editor, and I'm going down to Display Options. And I'm going to drop the Gate Mask Opacity to 0.1. There we go. Looks a lot better. All right, so I'm going to close the Attribute Editor for now. And um, now we need to decide on um, how to frame this. And before I do that, I want to put in that ground plane I was talking about um, because that really gives us a sense of where that frame should be. All right, to put in the ground plane, let's go into the poly modeling, add a plane, and then let's just scale this up. And I want to scale it out as well. And maybe I want to bring it forward just ever so slightly. All right, I'm going to turn off my grid in this scene. I don't need it. Now I want to bring this back just ever so slightly. And I can probably turn off the grid in here as well. So, and now let's give the plane that Arnold material as well. We can bring back the hypershade down here. Or if we select the plane, hold down the right mouse button, we can add a new material. And then under Arnold Shader, we can select that AI standard surface as well. And now we can just name this. So I'm going to name this AI Floor Plane. Sure. And for this one, I'm probably going to drop that um, color down just a little bit, just a little bit of a more of a gray. 
All right, so we have our cup, and our cup is not using our um, cup material. So let's just find out what happened. Um, we'll bring up the hypershade again, figure out where I went wrong. So we do have a cup material, but it's just not assigned to it yet. Okay, so we're going to minimize this. Close the attribute editor for a second. Select our cup, and to assign the material to this, we can um, go over the material, hold down the right mouse, not right mouse button, the middle mouse button, and drag it onto the cup, and that'll assign it to the cup. There we go. We created it, we just forgot to assign it, or I forgot to assign it. All right, I'm gonna close the hypershade for now, and then there's one more thing that I think I'll do, is that when we create our lights, um, actually, I'll talk about that later. Um, but what happens is that um, when we create our lights, it bounces into infinity, and it's easier to see once we put it in the light. So let's do that first. Um, okay, so under the Arnold tab, we're going to um, use a three-point lighting setup. So three-point lighting will need three lights. It's used in film and photography, photography and theater. So I'm going to put in uh, an area light. So under the Arnold shelf, click um, area light. And then I'm just going to pull this back, rotate it. And what I want to do is just have it about 45 degrees from the subject facing the front. Sorry, in the front, I should say. But yes, facing the front as well. And I'm going to bring that up, scale it up, bring it up a bit more. And then that's pretty good there. Maybe rotate it down just ever so slightly. All right, so that's the key light, so let's name that. So that's the one that is our main light. AI underscore key light. All right, the next light we'll need is our fill light. So what happens is the key light um, exposes our subject, right? It lights it up, but it creates a shadow on the other side, and the fill light fills in that shadow a bit. So we're going to use another um, area light, bring this back. And I'm just setting these up. I'm not turning them on just yet. Um, they are on a little bit right now. So if we press use lights, right, you can see that it's slightly lit. Okay, just going to scale this up as well. Rotate it. Looks pretty good right there. Maybe scale it up a bit more. And for this one, I'll rotate it down a little bit as well. I'll bring it up. Probably want to bring it back some more. Both of these lights are pretty close to our subject. All right, and then the final light we need is the backlight, or at least um, the final light in this setup. So I'm going to use another area light, bring this one back, and going to rotate this. I'm just going to. Hold down J this time, rotate it so that's facing straight on. Uh, so hard to tell. Okay, and then I'm gonna scale that up, scale it out. It's, it's a rather big light I'm using, but you'll see. And then I'm gonna just rotate it down ever so slightly so that it can light just a little bit of that inside of that cup. And then um, I wanna make sure that in here, it's big enough, so I'm just going to scale that up, scale it out, bring it up a little bit, and then let's name this one as well. So first we'll, we'll name our fill light. And then let's name the other one. And this one's called the backlight. All right, so we have our three lights. That's great. And then what we want to do now is if we're happy with this composition, at least for now, we can lock this camera. So I'm going I'm, I'm going to bring the camera in just slightly. So if I snap in, that's fine. But if it snaps too strong, you can just hold down Alt and just glide that in. So something here is probably going to work for me. And then I want to lock the camera. So click on this icon up here. That'll lock the camera. So now we can't select it. 
And then that camera, I want to hide it in this view as well. Um, so I can go up to here to show cameras and under cameras, just select that one. So now it's hidden. All right. And I don't need this panel open anymore, at least not for now. I can um, go back to my single panel view. And then what I was talking about earlier is um, I want to contain this light a little bit or these lights. Right now they bounce to infinity and I want um, these two lights to have a little bit of um, a bounce back. So you don't really need to do this, um, but I'm going to create one more object and it's a cube. I'm going to scale up this cube quite large and it's going to simulate a room. And going to scale it out. I said that I didn't need that other panel, but I need to bring it back now. So I'm going to select the two panel view. And in this one, I'm going to choose that render cam. Uh, where is it? Panels, render cam. And for some reason, I, oh, the cube's too big. Okay. So I just need to, um, I'm going to delete this front face. I'm not going to use it. And so just that I can see whether the edge of the cube is, um, so if it was too far in, I'd be able to see that, but it has enough um, horizontal space, so that's good. And I'm just going to bring it up. And what this allows um, the lights to do is bounce back. Gives it an extra sense of realism. And then what I want to do is give this cube its own material. Uh, I'm going to reverse these normals. I don't think it matters, but I'm just um, selecting the faces, holding down shift, holding down the right mouse button. I'm under face normals, so here, face normals. I'm going to reverse those. All right. And then I'm going to select the cube and give it its own material. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, add a new material, and under Sh Arnold Shader, AI Standard Surface. And for this one here, um, I'm just going to delete the history. Under AI Standard Surface, I'm going to call this AI Room. All right, and I think that's good for now. And now let's set up our renderer. So we don't need this view anymore. I'm gonna close the outliner and then um, go back to the single panel. And let's open up the Arnold render view. So here is our Arnold tab, our shelf. Click on that one. And if you click on the eye, it opens up the um, Arnold render view and right now um, it's using the perspective shape the perspective camera we can change that to the render cam and then if we hit play it'll give us a render but you won't be able to see much you'll be able to see a little bit um, right now it's not even rendering the through the right camera sometimes you have to um, switch it from there and then back before it, it brings it back to the right perspective all right, so I can see a little bit what's going on. Um, if I go into, so I'm just going to stop this for a second. So right now it's using the CPU to render. I want to set up so it's going to render using the GPU. It'll make our lives a little bit easier. Um, the renders will be faster. So I'm going to close this up. Also, what I normally do is I take this render view and I pin it to here. Right, um, and then that allows me work, but I have it set up um, as a workspace. So I've done this, saved the workspace. So I'm going to do that instead. So I'm going to close this up and switch to that workspace. There we go. And then um, let's go into our render settings. So up here, go into your render settings, click that cog wheel. And under here where it says renderable camera, switch to render cam. Um, I'll leave resolution alone later. We'll, um, increase that for the final render, or even just to see what it looks like with higher resolution. Under Arnold Renderer, I'm gonna leave this all alone for now. Um, there's a lot there, but we don't really need to change this for this kind of render. And under System, I'm gonna change the CPU to GPU. And under AOVs, I'm gonna change that to um, use the denoiser. All right, now we can close this up. And then, if we hit play now, once that GPU fires up, it'll be a lot faster. And let's start increasing the exposure. 
So the first thing we want to do is make sure that none of the other lights are on as we're adjusting that key light. So under intensity of the fill light, make sure that's set to zero. And for the backlight, make sure that's set to zero as well. So let's adjust this exposure. So this is our key light. Let's raise this up. We'll raise it up to seven for now, right? And this fires up. And the nice thing about this is um, in the Arnold render view, you can select this, select our cup, we can select the background, right? And then we can also, um, if we're using perspective, so I'm gonna change this to um, perspective for a second. It's funny, but um, there we go. You have to switch back and forth sometimes for it to update. Um, and then it updates fairly quickly and you can adjust um, whatever you like, you know, what kind of um, composition you like. And then if we turn on the denoiser, it cleans up rather quickly as well, right? So we can get a pretty fast preview of what our render will look like. But I'm going to switch back to our render cam. All right, so let's finish on lighting this up. Uh, first thing I can see is the background um, is a little bit shiny. So I'm going to select the background, go to the AI room, and I'm going to increase that roughness a bit. 0.3, 0 0.35 0 is probably good for now. And then let's finish adjusting the exposure for this um, scene. So work on your key light first. I'm gonna bring this to back up to about an eight. Eight's still looking pretty good, maybe like an 8.5. It really depends on the size of this, right? So how large you want this key light to be. I'm still gonna increase that light um, distance feels okay, but um, I want to give it a bit more of a rotation. Um, and then just increase that scale a little bit more. As you increase the scale of it, you'll need to bump up the exposure. But right now, um, I feel like this is looking pretty good. So what I'm noticing is our cup actually isn't flat on the table. So let's select our cup. I'm pressing the space bar. I'm going to go into one of these side panels, so maybe the four panel view, tapping spacebar here, frame in on it, and let's make sure that that is at the bottom, right? So I'm holding down D, holding down V to snap to the bottom of the cup. Make sure it's snapped to the bottom vertice there. There we go. And then holding down X, snapping that to the um, the ground plane. I'm gonna go back to here. All right, so our cup should now be sitting on the ground plane. And let me just double check that again. Yeah, there we go. All right, so next one thing we wanna do is um, work on the fill light. <laughs> okay. okay, so the fill light is not looking too bad. We'll work on temperature in a sec as well, or in a bit. So fill light, go into the attribute editor, and let's increase the intensity back to one. And now we would need to work on the exposure. So intensity, um, you wanna leave maybe like at one and really adjust the exposure. So um, fill light, again, I'm gonna increase the size of this. Just bring it back a little bit, up a little bit more, and let's try an exposure of three and see how it looks. Uh, maybe five. Five's looking pretty good for now. Um, all right. And then what I want to do is um, work on the backlight. Before I work on the backlight, I want to adjust the cup. I want to make sure that it's using the material or the material is um, what I want it to be. And if you choose a cup, there's some presets. I'm going to choose um, the ceramic preset. I'm going to replace that material. And then um, you'll notice that the cup is a lot shinier now. And I probably don't want it that shiny. I'm going to um, just play with the roughness a little bit. And the color is OK. Diffuse roughness, I'm going to increase as well a little bit as well. And then for some of the other settings, I'll leave alone. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. And then let's work on this backlight. So. Already, I can see that the um, 
the camera needs adjustment. So let's go back to our um, render cam. So I'm going to go back to my workspace for a second. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the two panel view. And I'm going to change this to Okay, for some reason I have this still pinned on my workspace. Change the panel to render cam. There we go. Um, got confused there for a second. And then with the render cam, I need to unlock that camera. Find the render cam. So I'm going to go to the outliner. Here we go. And oh yeah, I can't see it. So I have to go back to the renderer or back to show. Show camera. And you'll probably need to do this for your scene. It's just good to be able to navigate back and forth, right? And I just want to rotate that camera down just ever so slightly. Bring it up a little bit. I want to see that just the inside of that cup ever so slightly. There we go. Maybe just a little bit less. And then bring it down. Just a bit of playing around. This video is going to probably be a little bit long. Getting the composition is kind of important. All right, I think that'll work. And then um, let's switch back. So I'm going to close this outliner, lock the camera again, and then hide it in here. So we're getting some practice. All right, camera's hidden. And now let's go back to our other view. So I'm going to go back to single panel view for my main workspace. And then I'm going to switch back to that Arnold render view. All right. And in here, if you press F, you can frame in. And whenever you switch back to this, you might want to switch back to using the right camera, which is our camera here. And then hit play. Make sure it's rendering with the right camera. So you might have to, again, just switch back and forth till it's rendering using the right camera. And then the denoiser as well. So there we go. All right, it's looking pretty good. Next thing I want to do is um, work on that backlight. So changing this exposure to one and upping this um, exposure of the backlight. So maybe five. Backlight's pretty large, right? You can see it. So I'll probably need to up this to like something like 10. So 10's a little bit strong. So let's bring that down a little bit to like maybe like a nine. Okay, nine is looking a lot better. And our render is moving, coming along quite nicely. Now I want to make sure that um, um, work on these lights a bit more. I want to give it a bit roundness and softness. So the roundness is going to uh, round out those highlights a little bit. So if I were to bring this up to like a one, you can see that um, that highlight just totally rounds out. I don't want it that extreme. I just want it like a little bit. And what I can do is just bring this in a little bit so you can see this render a bit easier, maybe a bit more. All right. If you ever just want to render part of this, right, just click on this and then you can just render out part of it if you want, and it renders a lot faster. Okay. I'm not going to do that, though. Okay. And then I want to um, go back to my key light and just soften the lighting a little bit as well. All right, looking pretty good. I think the... I think I like the the, um, the roughness on the cup. I'll leave that. And then now let's go to um, this light. And for this light, I also want to um, soften the light a little bit and increase the roundness just ever so slightly. And I also want to use some color temperature here. So um, I like that this kind of um, white fluorescent kind of lighting, but I want to use the color temperature, and I'm going to reduce this to about 4,000 Kelvin. Maybe even... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll leave that at 4,000. And um, what I'll do is I'll increase the... the 
I'll decrease that t color temperature as well for the backlight just to warm it up. And maybe I'll do 4,500 on this one. There we go. Starting to look pretty good there. And then here for the backlight, I can probably leave those alone. I want to up these samples, but not quite yet. I want to actually increase. So this one, I also will use a color temperature, but I'm going to contrast it. I'm going to give it a nice cool tone, maybe 8,000. Just to see how it looks. All right, there we go. It's looking um, pretty nice now. I like that neutral look. And then um, I want to up some of these samples as well. So that'll up the quality of the lights, the lighting. I'm going to bring this to about a six. And you probably want to do this um, once you establish all the other things because this will increase the render time. I'm going to increase the samples on this one to about a six as well. And then for the backlight, same thing. All right. It's looking pretty good. Let's frame it on that again. So now we have our cup. And I think that's um, looking the way I want. I, the only thing left is maybe like doing um, a higher resolution render for you guys to see it better. Um, temperature wise, it's looking pretty good. I just want to up this one, um, warm it up a little bit, I should say just to see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to bring this to about a 3000. And then I'm going to up the backlight just to see what it looks like. So warm it up, I should say. Maybe 3500. It's looking pretty interesting. Um, 4000. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at 4,000. And then that's pretty much done. Now we have some light. It's bouncing off this back play. If I were to turn off this, um, hide this um, box, you'll see like, it's a little, actually for, for one thing, you know, we're losing that background, but um, it, it I, I find it improves that render. So yeah, I think we can pretty much finish this off. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is switch back to my regular workspace just because it's getting kind of long, right? Rendering is always like a very um, organic process. And then what I want to do is now open up the render view. Um, and then we'll hit play. Again, we'll make sure that we're using the right cam. And what I want to do is increase now the resolution and then show you guys what that looks like. So we'll switch on under noiser as well. Settings, let's do 1080p, um, just because 4K gets so long. Right, and then we just need to press F to frame in again. Um, and close this up, and once it's done, I'll, um, I'll fast forward it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so the render finished. This is what we have so far. It's looking pretty good. Highlights are looking pretty um, strong and um, good, I mean. And uh, the background has a nice tone to it. I feel like um, this cup is, um, yeah, it looks fine. I'll save out this render. So if you want to save a snapshot of it, by the way, I'm just keep pressing F to frame in. Just, you can just cl click a snapshot and that way if you want to compare it with like another um as you adjust the lights in the composition you can um and then what i'll do is i'll save out this render so i'm going to go to file save image and then you just need to um, navigate to where you want to save your image so um if you create a snapshots folder it can save in there as well right or you can just save it to where i'm going to just save it to my desktop i'm going to call it um, um cup that's fine. And then, uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, pretty much what we have for our render. So. Okay, just one more thing before we close out. I made a 4K render and I had adjusted some of the lights. So I just wanted to show you guys what that looked like. I um, decreased some of the warm light and I increased the exposure a little bit. But 
it's not much different from the other render. So just want to show you guys that. All right, that concludes our rendering of the cup we made um, using three-point lighting. Hopefully you guys have found this useful. If you have, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys later.